beginning. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so um, yeah, let's start. So <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm here with Ibium and uh, 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 I'm happy to have this uh, opportunity to discuss uh, a few topics with him. Um, uh, he's a very important part of the Sugar Labs uh, community, um, and um, I feel um, excited to have this uh, chance to talk to him about um, his work um, and, uh, you know, just to actually just to get to know um, you, Ibium, you know, a little bit better um, as part of this call. And um, I imagine, you know, people watching this um, will get an opportunity to, uh, you know, learn a little bit about you, your work, um, and then through this, you know, um, you know, what a person's uh, journey is like in uh, Sugar Labs. So, um, Ibium, if you could just like um, introduce yourself, um, you know, maybe just uh, um, how you got into computers. I, I read a little bit, um, you know, before we started um, yeah. of an interview about how you got involved um, with computers, but maybe if you could um, share that story. Sure. Uh, uh, hi, uh, my name is Chihon Ibiam, but then a lot of people call me Ibiam because it's, yeah, it's easier to pronounce. And I'm from Nigeria. And um, for a while now, I've actually been maintaining software at Sugar Labs. And um, I got into, I started maintaining, I started uh, using the Sugar software back in 2009. 2009 or 2010, I can't, I think it was 2009, 2010, early 2010, uh, because um, they, uh, I had attended a, we call it secondary school here, we call it uh, junior high school in the US, All right? So I had attended a school where they'd done um, uh, the One Laptop for Child project, and I was given a computer, and yeah, I is, <clears throat> from the very first time I received the computer, I actually just wanted to know how it worked, right? Because it seemed like a really good device. It seemed nice. I'd never gotten a personal computer before. And uh, when I got one, I wanted to know uh, how it worked, you know? So why, why does the mouse move to this point when I move it? Why does this action happen when I click? And so that's how uh, everything started. I, I started tinkering and trying to figure out how it worked. And that's basically how everything started and got me to this point that I'm at today. Uh, wow, actually there's there's a lot to unpack in just that. I, I am learning a lot about you uh, just through this. So I didn't realize that you got started with um, one of the EXO laptops, one of the one laptop per child laptops. I did. Wow. And how old were you at that time? Uh, I think, um, I think I was some, I was around 12, 11, 12, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I was around um, 11, 12. I just got me into secondary school, so yeah. Um, this is uh, great for me to hear because um, I've been doing a little bit of like a archaeology project, uh, you know, over the last, you know, few months um, and trying to, it, because I was not yet involved with uh, uh, software education, you know, programming education, you know, until I started uh, with you know, music blocks around like 2014, 2015. Um, so I kind of missed um, all of the the excitement around Ladies. one, one <laughs> laptop per child. But yeah. you know, when when you look online nowadays and you try to find things, um, the one part that I I really have a hard time finding you know more information about for one laptop per, per child. Are these stories like what you're telling about you know the the kids that actually received those laptops and like what they did um, with those laptops? Um, so if you can maybe like unpack that you know 
uh, even more like, you know, so what were like some of the first, I mean, you mentioned something about the mouse, but like, you know, what were some of the first like, you know, programs, you know, you, you did, you know, uh, what was it like in the classroom? Was it like mainly you, you know, just like exploring on your own? Um, was it uh, facilitated by your instructor? Um, did your peers like help you, you know, learn more about, about this? Okay, uh, so at the time, the first, the first time I received the Excel laptop, yeah, um, I remember going home with it. And uh, at the time, at the time, we had just sugar, right? I, about a year later, if I remember correctly, I can't actually remember correctly, but I think it was about a year later or less than a year later, then we had um, Federal Remix. So Federal Remix was a combination of sugar and Fedora. Right, I think it was probably for Iran Federal 18 at the time. I can't actually remember because it's been a while. So, but it was just sugar at first. All right, so I went home and um, sugar interface, it was nice. And I opened an activity. I couldn't quit the activity at the time. I couldn't go back to the home view. It was, <laughs> it was a funny experience, honestly. Uh, but then um, I, 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 I'd taken it to a neighbor, he was older. And he just pressed something and like, I figured, oh, these buttons actually can do this. And then that was how, you know, I, I learned about the home views. And then I started playing with activities. Um, I used to like give me this activity. And then in, in school at the time, yeah, um, in my class, we used, to, we used to play around with some activities, right? Um, we used to play around with Scratch. We create games together. Like there's when a, about a year later, there about we, I and some of my classmates we came together and then we made a game in Scratch. All right, so everybody had something they were doing. This person was in charge of some artwork. This person was in charge of doing something else. And then yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and then we came together and we arranged the blocks in Scratch. It was actually really fun because then imagine after we see about a year later, everybody has been using it. We have some experience to a great extent of what it was like all right to be using these activities so um and then i i remember that um i remember that when i first uh received uh when we first had the uh federal remix image right um because i know that at the time we had a lab we called it the seed lab in the school seed at the time was the project that seed was um, the project that brought the one of older PC project to us, right? So it was SEED, S-E-E-D, Swamiji Excellence in Educational Development. So they had a lab at our school at the time where we could, where they, uh, they, we had, they had a school server set up in the lab. And then you could also charge your devices at the lab. You could leave it at the lab sometimes, but, you know, it wasn't always a good idea. But yeah, we had, uh, we had a lab and then we had some trainings sometimes in the lab selected few people went to the training. So, but I remember getting the um, first, um, oh, uh, I remember getting the first, um, no, I remember getting the um, Federal Remix image, yeah. So what happened was when it came out, um, I can't remember exactly what happened, but the, we, we used to have these trainings that some selected students used to go for. I can't remember how many, uh, it was about two or three students because there were a lot there were other schools in nigeria that were part of your pc project so each school had students and teachers represented right so they had to just pick a few people and go to this training with them and then i think it was around this time that they had brought the federal 18 um sugar remix um, federal remix image for us when it came back so they had they'd given them the image and then showed them how to um run the image on your pc laptop and then when we when they got back um, you know, they had they started installing it for everyone, and I remember I got I they installed it on my device and on my laptop, and I go home, and I couldn't sleep that night because <laughs> that was the first that was the first time I had encountered Fedora, right? Because it had been just sugar, so that was the first time I had encountered Fedora, and I entered everywhere I could enter. At this point, I I had already had some experience because it's been a year, and I'd, I'd been using sugar, so I already knew certain things. But then when I got Fedora, <clears throat> I literally everywhere I, I went to the settings, I tinkered with every setting I could see. Literally, it was it was fun. And then the next day in school, when I went to school, I noticed that virtually 
everybody in class hadn't done what I did. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because nobody, nobody, nobody knew the things I know. Because I, 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 I thought it was something that oh maybe other people did the same thing or something like that. But literally, That's it funny. was just like some other person. Yeah, it, it is because a lot of people were coming to me and asking me this about this. Because uh, I showed I when I, okay what I did was when I got to school the first the next day <clears throat> I went to my friends and then I showed them straight up this is what I saw this is what I saw ah it was fun. So it was like, ah, uh, no, nah, no, nah, it was a really good experience. Um, so, yeah. yeah so um, I'm hearing a lot of things from what uh, you're, you're, you're saying, like, you know, with this example of, uh, you know, using Scratch, you know, I'm hearing a little bit about like collaboration. You said one student kind of took on the role of doing the artwork, another did, you know, like the program itself, and then, you know, one did I don't remember what else, like music or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also, you know, kind of hearing, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, we talk about, you know, low floor, high ceiling. So um, for anyone watching this who's like, what is Fedora other than a hat? Um, so, <laughs> so Fedora is a distribution of GNU Linux, um, and these uh, laptops uh came pre-installed with uh fedora and the sugar desktop environment and you could like switch between the two um yeah, and and by the way when i first used uh you know gnu linux like i did the same thing and i still have a habit of doing this too and i can sometimes get myself <laughs> in trouble um you know because you can customize so many things uh yeah which which yeah is <laughs> uh very ad addictive yeah yeah <laughs> um but then you know so we we talk about that and i think some people are a little bit skeptical because they're like okay so you're going to give a kid a laptop and you're going to give them you know uh this this really high ceiling you know are they going to get lost but you're telling me that it actually really was motivating, not just for yourself, but for everyone in the classroom, you know, to kind of like get the quote unquote, like big kid tools. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the thing is, um, the, the, we started with sugar first and um, that was a good idea because um, mm -hmm. in, in school back then we, some, we used, um, when we learned in class, right, we used some of the activities in our class, all right. So when we're learning French, I know that um, some of the French texts we read were from Wikipedia activity back then. Um, <clears throat> we changed the language to French and we used, we'd read some French from the text in class. And then there, so it was, it was really good because having sugar and then having these activities, because the um, sugar um, usually, the sugar has this pedagogical idea that you learn what you do, right? So I think it was um, Simo Pepper that introduced the idea of learning while doing, I can't remember correctly. So it was something that was there from the beginning because we had sugar and the way the sugar interface works is um, it's easy to collaborate with people who also have the devices, right? So you have, um, when you use activities like maze or uh, memorize, um, implode, they have a feature in sugar that lets you share um, your instance, your activity instance, that's the activity you're running with someone else, as long as they have the same device and they're um, they're connected to the same network, right? So um, even at the time, yeah, um, seeing as we didn't really have internet access, um, we, the only time we had internet access was when we were in school and uh, access was heavily limited. So um, we didn't really, um, we couldn't just do anything because the access was limited. Right, but then we had, <clears throat> excuse me, we had information at least, and that mattered um, because once you give um, kids these tools that they could do anything with this thing, it, we were kids. We actually wanted to do these things because we had access to them. So we played around with it and it helped with um, us learning how to collaborate with, it, with each other, especially when we made the game because what we, what we had done with the game was we did, um, we had various characters so some people were focused on one character and then some other people were focused on a different character some other person was focused on music and all these happened because we had already been using other activities that we were easily collaborating on right we played maze together literally you'd see 
Um, you see, uh, like in, for instance, in a desk, you, you see about three people sitting down together doing the one thing, but then they're on different devices, but they're all looking at the same thing because the um, state of the activity is shared and everything anybody does on one screen is shared among the is shared between the other screens or among the other screens. So it's uh, it, it was it was using sugar first was actually a very good step for anything else that came after because we used it from the classroom and uh, so in our learnings we used it we used the activities they helped and before anything else. So I think um, using Sugar First was actually a really, uh, really good thing because of the way it was designed and the interface. And then anything that came after Sugar was a plus because Sugar helped lay the foundations that we needed. Um, this is all really great. And uh, I could probably talk to you about this for another hour, but maybe <laughs> maybe uh, I'll go on to just like one more question kind of like in, in this arena you know, like you in Nigeria with um, the one laptop per child computer running, you know, sugar desktop plus those uh, activities. Um, could you share like, um, you know, you know, one or two, uh, you know, other like big learning moments for you where you were just like, like wow i just like learned something new i mean you did kind of mention learning french um through wikipedia um certainly that you know making a game with with scratch and doing collaboration but i feel i'm getting the sense that there was you know even more there so if you could share like one other kind of like aha moment for you where you were like wow this is you know i guess in particular like uh in, in the realm of computation where you you were like, oh, wow, you know, this is a, a really powerful idea that I can use to, to do something that kind of like led to where you are today. Okay, so um, when I started using Sugar, right, I hadn't thought about um, how the activities in Sugar were written or if I could actually write any, right? I just knew that the activities were there and then we had um, an activity store at the time we could easily access and then later on through um i never really got to attend one of those um, trainings back in school because at some point i wasn't available to go for one i almost went but i didn't but then a friend of mine went for one and he came back and okay i i, we, I learned about this sugar has this thing that you could actually be able to view the um, source code of an activity, right? So if you clicked that button, it's, it's it has a text view source. You'd be able to see the view source and the source code of the activity. The first time I used it, I didn't really understand anything I was saying, right? Because eh, you don't know what you're saying. It's it's it was Python, but I didn't know what it was. It just seemed it was code. It was obvious that it, this is actually what the uh, what this whole thing was made of, right? So I had a friend who attended um, the, one of those trainings and he learned a lot at the training and he came back and he shared some of the things he learned with me. And um, he, had, he had also been in contact with, at the time, some of the developers of Sugar. He had also, he met Claudia and then Claudia introduced him to Walter. So, um, so he learned quite a few things and then he came back told me about some of the things he learned and that was how I learned about the fact that we could actually write activities ourselves but then this was during the data part of um, our junior secondary school because we were almost leaving school at the time. So we didn't really have much time to do anything extra in that school. Uh, but that was when I had, um, that was when I said, uh, I also got introduced to some of the people who wrote the software. That was when I started learning about the thing called programming. So Python, these activities were written with in Python. You could actually write one yourself. And that was when I actually started learning about mm -hmm. Python. Yeah. And um, yes, that's pretty much what led to today. Um, this is, the, in my opinion, really powerful uh, stuff, um, like testimony, I guess, if, if you will. Um, I agree. <laughs> because the reason I'm asking you this is uh, kind of back to my like archaeology project, you know, when I when I go online and I look up, you know, one laptop per child, um, uh, 
you know, for example, if I put in in a search engine like Google, uh, it if I put one laptop per child space, it will predict what the next word is. Um, I don't know. Have Have you tried this, Ibium? <laughs> I've actually never tried it before. Let me try it now. <laughs> you could You could screen share and try. <laughs> yeah, I could actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, here, let, let me let me do it. I'm putting myself okay. on the li line here because yeah. uh, you know it might not do what I I am imagining. I to... Okay, <laughs> but let's see. I think there's a pretty good chance it'll do exactly what I imagine. Um, okay. Yes. So uh, see the second one down. It's not the first one, the second one. Look at the word that's associated with it. Oh, can you see my screen? I actually can't. I don't know why. You can't? No, I can't. Uh... I wonder if it was shown on the on the stream. Well, why don't you why don't you try it and tell me what word comes up? Uh, right now, we can't hear you, Ibium. I think you need to use Google, too. I'm muted. Oh, uh, OK. I haven't used Google in a long time. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I haven't used Google in a long time, too. But this is a good <laughs> good test for what you know people are searching for, because Google actually you know, uh, uses other people's search results. But um, mm -hmm. the word that pops up, and it, it did for me just now, um is failure and uh oh. and you know it's i what, what oh, i'm hearing I from see it. i see yeah it. failure is on yeah failure is the um fourth from dr go so my dr go search failure is the fourth that comes out yeah so even in duck duck go i can't and but what i'm hearing from you does not sound like a failure but it's so hard to find these success stories um, because they haven't been told. <laughs> like, like that's why I felt like you know it's important to to do this you know series where we're just uh, you know talking to people who actually used sugar in their youth. Um, and if for anyone who didn't follow some of like the previous uh, talks, you know, my son is seven years old. Um, I. I inherited a one laptop per child, you know, like one of, you know, I don't know which generation, like, but kind of a mid generation, uh, one laptop per child. And, uh, you know, I gave it to him, you know, uh, like when he was like three or four or so. And, and he's already learned a lot from this. Um, and, uh, I, I just want people to hear from more people that, you know, in their youth, were using the sugar desktop. You know, were actually like actively engaged in, you know, constructionist uh, education. Um, you know, through sugar in particular, um, to hear, you know, what actually transpired after that. And so, would you agree with this? You know, people calling it a failure. <laughs> Ibium? It's, it's it's definitely not a failure and that's that's my perspective of, of course everybody everybody have has their definition of what a failure is and uh, i see i say it's not a failure because um it, uh, the project actually produced uh, a lot of engineers today who are um who are good at computers or love computers and they probably wouldn't have, or it would have taken them more time to eventually learn that they liked computers, if not for the fact that the sugar project existed, All right? I mean, yeah. in um, a, back in uh, back in school, uh, when I first received uh, my Excel laptop, and the only thing I wanted to know was 
how it worked. Right? I didn't really care so much about using it. I loved using it, but then I was actually intrigued by everything. I actually wanted to know how it worked. Not a lot of people were that way, right? So um, was, lots of people just went using it. Everybody went about their daily lives. But truthfully, um, uh, the the way the device is, if if you think about how um, well, how it works, it's built in a way where you could actually find out, right, how it works. It's, there's literally no restriction to finding out how it works. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things, one of the things at the time that really, really helped, all right. But then it was <clears throat> uh, there was something called deployments, right, back in the day. So there was something called deployments, and the deployment was basically basically comprised of students who use the uh, sugar uh, uh, OS and then sugar desktop and then developers in the same um, environment as the students who wrote activities for them based on how the things they were learning in the, cl in the classroom and then teachers who helped with the development of uh, um, these activities so they could produce some pedagogy value right so in some parts these deployments were very active and in those parts where these deployments were very active, we've seen students that have actually done really good. We had we had a student in uh, we had a student, a sugar user, a student. Um, he I, I can't remember if he won Google come up, Google coding at the time, but he found a bug in one of Google's um, services, one of their servers, while we were teenagers, <clears throat> and he was paid for it. He, he he got into bug bounty too early on. He was so you can imagine that. <laughs> This whole thing was made possible because of the fact that he started from sugar, right? We have a lot of kids today. I mean, I mean, yeah. only a lot of them because they were in other countries, right? For me, it was just myself and a friend who were interested in uh, how the devices worked. And today, we've actually gone on to pursuing careers in um, computer science, right? And and the thing is, um, I I don't think the project failed, right? I think the the aim of the project was to put these tools in the hands of kids and see how it helps them, how they react to these devices, how it helps them with learning in school and also learning about computers, right? So, and then this, this device in particular helps them to learn and do at the same time because the device gives them the ability to do various things, right? Use these activities, um, write anything you want to write in school, work together on projects, learn in class, so it wasn't just we were just learning, learning. We we're also doing because we had these devices, right? I, I yeah. think if if that was the aim, if that's what the definition of success is, then it definitely is. I mean, probably maybe if somebody talks about it failing as a business, because at some point, um, a, a, the devices maybe they were it, it didn't really sell that much. I don't I can't remember if they were sold because I know I got it for free. So I was really bothered about that being sold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think the idea was that they sold them in bulk to uh, to governments in particular. Um, yes, 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 yes. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I mean, here for Sugar Labs, you know, we're very much focused on on the students and on the teachers. Um, but I, I did you know it's a provocative question i think it's a good question um but you know i don't think the case is closed on that that's why i wanted to bring it up let's pause for just a second um you're still sharing your screen but keep it on for just one more moment are you oh, still running I? yeah are you still oh, running I did. <laughs> are you still running fedora to yes. this day okay yes i have never used anything besides fedora before <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> some some people are surprised when they see me for the first time and then uh, they look at my laptop and they ask what is that i like that's you know that's fedora actually because yeah. fedora is a variant all right and then they wonder like, i've never seen this before I'm like oh, oh well because <laughs> windows windows is what people use around here you know from yeah, everyday yeah. life to office use, but I got introduced to something quite early and I just stuck to it. So and it stuck to me too. Um, you know, that's exciting. My um I use a lot of Debian based systems. I uh I dabbled a little bit in Fedora, uh, but uh you know, since since I started with Debian based systems, it kind of like, you know, it's in my muscle memory how to do updates yeah. and, and things <laughs> like that and to troubleshoot certain things. Um uh 
it, you know, which actually, so let's, let's move to like one more kind of provocative question, which, you know, and I, and I, I promise we'll move <laughs> forward from here, but, oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm cool <laughs> with anything. I like, I like where we're headed right now. But a lot of people, you know, um, also kind of like criticize the pro the approach of uh, using these uh, less ubiquitous uh, systems like GNU Linux, because I think a lot of, uh, I think that some, some people kind of see the role of like computers in education as being, okay, so let's prepare them for, um, you know, uh, a job in, in an office. And, you know, they're trying to imagine that the future is going to be you know, precisely the same as, as right now, you know, and therefore, you know, like, for example, you just myself as an example. So in high school, I think it was like sophomore year, you know, I took some computer class and it was like how to use Excel. Like, I remember just like sitting there, like using, you know, Microsoft Excel uh, for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you know, which now, now I use LibreCalc. I mean, it does the exact same thing. Um, but, uh, you know, some people are really suspicious when they see, okay, you're, you're using a new Linux, especially with the sugar desktop environment. You said that was a good thing to start with, but when they see that they're like, oh my gosh, that's so different than the computer that they might be using, you know, 20 years from now, are they going to be able to get a job, you know, but you're using it on your everyday computer, you know, um, you know, I assume that you're, <laughs> you're productive on this computer. Yes. <laughs> you know, can you, can, sir, for anyone who has any doubt about that, can you maybe kind of like go through, you know, your, your daily workflow and the things you're able to do on the, on the computer you're using today, using the same system that you used when you were 11 or 12 years old? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think that the thing that, the thing that um, if, if somebody says something like what you just said, right, uh, they, they, they forget that the thing, the good thing about Linux is it's, um, it's built on communities, right? So as long as communities exist, the software would always exist because you have people that would keep improving the software from the designs, um, the UI itself, and to the utilities. So um, as long as the community exists, people would always make the software better. So, and the thing is, if you say, truth is, of course, things evolve, all right, and things die up over time and new things come up. But then it's easy to go from something old to something new that's similar, right? So starting with uh, Linux early on, and then moving on to other Linux distros from Sugar to Fedora Remix. And I used Arch at one point, so I went back to Fedora. It's as it's literally these these um OSs have something in common, these operating systems have something in common, right? So as long as you the starting point, all right, the starting point it's it makes it a bit easy for you to just move on to something else if you want to, because of the fact that there are lots of documentation sometimes that help and then communities there are lots of people that would easily help you figure anything you want to know out lots of people out there would actually help you if you encounter a problem and you go if you google it's, if you if you're trying to do something and you google um anything um you would see that there are a lot of people that actually have encountered the same problem you have and they want to help you out too so i mean and then as a kid as a kid right it makes perfect it made perfect sense to me to have this because <clears throat> it was tied to what i did in the classroom so it was easier to um use sugar because a lot of the things i did in the classroom they were also somewhat tied to some of the activities we used uh, we had calculator activity we had include these activities were actually really helpful for us it was tied to what we did in the classroom so it was a bit easier to use it at the time all right now as you get older you no longer get into the environment but you discover that you actually liked this you actually like the fedora remix you like fedora and then it's it's not difficult for you to actually learn what if you could figure the first one out what makes you think you can figure the second one out you definitely can yeah. so right, it's uh, uh, as when it comes to what exists today is 
uh, would probably will not ex ex um, exist tomorrow. If as long as you, you're here today, it's a good starting point. Tomorrow, whatever comes, you could learn about it. It's easy to learn about things. Well, and also, you know, we have the opportunity to like create the tools for tomorrow, you know, um, exactly. which kind of, I think is a good segue into the the next topic. Um, so we get to learn, you know, a little bit more about Ibium, um, kind of put a face to the name. If you've, you know, if you're in the Sugar Matrix channel um, or on one of our mailing lists, um, surely, you know, uh, you've, you've seen his name because he's so active. Um, uh, he, uh, Ibium does a lot um, in the Sugar, community in development um and uh he was contracted um by sugar labs a few years in a row to do you know maintenance work so i you know i wanted to pick his brain about his experience doing that you know you know um uh you know what it involves um what considerations you know might we make you know going forward um in terms of uh making things you know i guess e more easily maintainable if you know if we're able to kind of predict those things as well as possible um and uh you know also just kind of like see the scope of of what it is that you know we're we're trying to do um as an organization um that focuses on you know this you know these kinds of tools for the classroom for teachers and students so um on that note ibium if you can share you know i mean first of all you can say like some of the things that you worked on um and give us an idea of of what you've done over the years uh you're muted right now so yeah can you hear me now i actually thought i muted myself yeah i can hear you Okay, so um, over the years, um, I've served as the as the release manager for Sugar zero point one twenty and zero point one twenty one. So what that basically means is um, changes that we pushed out in versions zero point one zero point one twenty and zero point one twenty one. They all went through me, and um, I had to oversee some of the changes and do some of the changes myself too and um i i the thing is maintenance is as is very very important because you can't just create something and then leave it there all right because literally every <coughs> excuse me literally everything you use to create software is evolving so as things evolve things break all right so you need to uh keep maintaining them um, and then I've also uh, I've also worked on some system admin um, tasks at Sugar Labs. I um, I helped move um, our translation server from Pudu, which is outdated and no longer being maintained, to Weblit. We currently use Weblit. So yes, if you want to help with translations, just go to Weblit or SugarLabs.org and register, and you can help out with um, translations. So I've also helped with translation in the past. Um, I used to, I helped translate sugar to my local language back then. It's been a long time. So, yes, I've also helped with uh, mentoring folks and, I mean, helping onboard new contributors because it's um, it's important that you have people come into the community and feel welcome and feel motivated to actually help out and contribute to software. It's, it's a privilege because it's, it's they are not obligated to, right? But then they decided to um, use the software and then want to open an issue or create a pull request for a feature or to fix an, a problem they noticed. So, and that's another thing I've been doing, helping um, new contributors um, get comfortable with contributing sugar. And it's, it's actually been um, a really fun thing to do. Um, yeah, uh, maybe we can pick apart, you know, some of uh like each one of these things so when you did the the release work for 0 0.120 um and 0 0.121 um can you like walk us through like some of the you know the work that that needed to be done some of the challenges you faced um 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at the time, yeah, we what happened was um, we had a checklist of things we wanted to go into version 120, right? Some of it were, some of it were halfway done. Some of it had not been done at all. Mm-hmm. So what 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 went into it was some of the things that we have we done i completed the work that was supposed to be done and then some of the things that weren't done i uh i started and finished them so um and when i finished them i tested the things that, we, that needed to be tested and then i made a release right and one of the things um we when when i make a release that when we anybody who's a release manager sugar labs when you make a release Today, I wear different hats because we don't have a lot of maintainers. But one thing that happens is when you make a release, we have um, we have downstreams, right? Not every, some people use Sugar through Fedora, that's the Sugar on a Stick, or through Ubuntu, and or through Debian. And we have these are they are packaged separately. But then once we make a release, whoever maintains these um, packages in our downstreams, they also have to update because there's a new version out. And we want this version to get to whoever uses our software. So um, I also take care of updating um, our Fedora packages. So the the the, um, the checklist also included updating these packages in Fedora, right? So after I did everything I needed to do in Sugar, made changes, made a release, I had to update these uh, packages in Fedora too. So um, that involved using the Fedora packaging system running it um, after you um, update, you run through Koji build, you run through the Fedora build and then you upload your sources. So that's pretty much what's um, 0. 0.1, um, 0. 0.1 uh, 20 uh, included. And the same thing happened in 0. 0.121. We had um, some work that needed to be done. And in, in 0. 0.121, we had um, we had an issue with uh, we we had to port one of um, the tools we are using that was WebKit two to from WebKit two four point zero to WebKit two four point one because the WebKit two four point zero had there was a bug and Fedora at the time where had stopped um, the use of WebKit two point four one two four point one um, zero rather so we had to port to four point one and that was among the things we did in the checklist for version one, um, 0. 0.121. So it's literally the same process. Um, we have um, things we want to go into this version and then the work that needs to be done, if it's already started, if we finish the work and then we move on to other things in the checklist. And then once we um, get everything in the checklist done, we make a release and then we create our source files, upload them when we need to upload them. And then on the packaging side, you also upload and make these changes you build whatever build system that uh, the uh os you're packaging for uses you make changes running through their build system and when everything works fine it gets um included into you know the next update that gets pushed out so that that's uh pretty much what that that's like yeah so i'm hearing that there's like uh you know kind of like a lot of moving parts because you've got to update multiple systems if you will like within the larger system um is that is that a correct <laughs> way of thinking pretty about much. it <laughs> yeah 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 pretty much pretty much it is um yes. i i i've been doing music blocks uh you know work and uh i i can kind of experience maybe what you're talking about because we have uh uh we're working with python and there's so many dependencies and they don't you know not every version of python works well with the other um so um e- even on one of my uh computers uh i just like couldn't get get all the the different versions to line up um but you know um this is in development when you deploy something you want everything to more or less you know just work well with one another um and then as you're doing that like like you were saying you know with uh webkit you know the world is like changing around you um people are finding like a vulnerability or um they're like refactoring their code or something because they discovered a, a better way of doing something um and then you know what what we need to do when that happens is you know pull in those new versions 
and and then also like test them to make sure that they work you know before we deploy them um so that so that you know people can get the most up-to-date version but also uh correct me if i'm wrong but you know a lot of like um you know package managers you know like the app store if you will if you're like when a layman's term uh because you know a lot of these systems have package managers which kind of like work like app stores um they won't go they won't be put in there uh until you have kind of like made everything up to date right um or they'll mm. just keep using like an older version until it's up to date and tested uh, so what, what happens is when 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 things change right let, let's let's use the instance of um moving from python 2 to python 3 right um yeah. i'm trying to remember the ex i think it was sometime around february 30. uh i'm trying to remember correctly but i i, I really can't so fedora started moving slowly from um Python 2 to Python 3, then I, I think it was Fedora 3. I can't remember what exact version that Python 2 was deprecated. So Fedora did not, Fedora, Fedora no longer packaged Python 3. All right, now, on for we uh, as the upstream that have our software running in Fedora, right, which is our downstream, if we don't, um, if we don't update our software and have whoever maintains that, if you don't port our software from Python 2 to Python 3, first off, and then make a release, release a new version, because when you port, you make a new version that you release. So from these releases, anybody who uses your software can just get that particular version and use. So if you don't do that, what happens is the whoever packages your software in Fedora, for instance, will not be able to get this new version. And what well, in the um, Fedora, they have a um, triage that it's called Bugzilla. All right. So they open a ticket against your package, right? Because they check the they, they check for they have lots of they, they they I think they have scanners that scan for packages that are still using Python two, and they have a date, right? So they have a date for phasing out those packages. So if your package isn't tickets are opened against your package, right? So if your package hasn't been ported to Python three yet, there were tickets that were opened because they are warning you that we would and they were opened these tickets were opened to that particular version of fedora that it's running on or it's been the issue occurs right so if you don't um if you don't update your package and then the package maintainer package my uh, manager does the same thing on his end what happens is your software gets dropped out of the next release so fedora drops they no longer mean they no longer package your software with the next version of Fedora that comes out. Yeah. So it is very crucial that you actually do these things if you want your software to still be in use by people or if you want it to still be packaged and distributed. If you don't, it gets dropped because they are phasing out um, these versions for a reason because obviously everything is evolving. If you want to move, you want to evolve, you have to update these. Um, things to else your packages get dropped and what that what that means is very simple the software is pretty much goes into existence because they no longer distribute it and i doubt people actually go back to running older versions people usually update their software for good reasons so nobody keeps going back to older version except you have yeah, an old machine which uh, it's not not a lot of people have old machines and stuff like that so you want people to use current versions of your software so you have to update it yeah actually that's a really great uh explanation of that um so i'm looking at the 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 clock uh um maybe if you can say um one thing about you know so say uh i'm kind of a beginner or maybe you know like intermediate um developer um if you will <laughs> um okay. i want i want to you know kind of like i'm either at the beginning of my journey or i'm like a, a couple years into my journey of learning program and i want to get involved in the sugar labs community um maybe can you just you know uh tell you know those people like what are some of like the main priorities that you know you might want them to work on 
um, right now. I know someone might watch this for like, you know, a few years from now, but like, you know, right now, what are some of like the main priorities that would be, you know, maybe an easy entry, but also incredibly impactful and helpful for our greater community? Thank you. Um, the first thing that easily comes to mind is use sugar, because that's literally the best starting point, right? It's easier for you to um, figure out what's wrong with something when you actually use it. If you don't use something, you actually wouldn't know what's wrong or what needs improvement, or you would not see anything of that sort. So please, by all means, use sugar first, right? So get sugar. Uh, thankfully, we have various, um, you could run sugar in a VM, you could run sugar um on the bare metal we have um these uh we have uh, fedora source that's sugar on a stick that you could actually install on any um device you want and we also have sugar riser which runs in the browser so just using sugar is a really good starting point but if you want to go beyond um using sugar to contribute and right now we're, we're trying to um look at putting sugar to gtk4 because um gtk3 is nearing its end of life and it's something that we have on our list to do because once gtk3 gets to its end of life and it's been dropped in our uh, downstream we actually need to stop using it and then move over to gtk4 so it's something that's actually um we're looking towards doing the work um there's there's currently a draft of what that would look like um but then it's not it's not being done as it's not the draft hasn't it's just it's just a draft right a good starting point for anybody who's interested so, but then the work involves, it goes a lot more from um, porting our C code to porting our Python code and then testing um, these uh, changes and um, then releasing this um, so we could update um, in our downstreams. Something, something happened where the stream got dropped. Uh... Uh, but uh, the last thing that you said was, uh, you know, that you recommend people use sugar. Um, yeah. I think that's a really great idea because a lot of uh, people that come into the community uh, kind of forget that step zero. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And when you when you're really familiar with, well, it's crucial to be really familiar with the the tool that you're working on, um, not just you know working on the code, but like. You know what's the point of, of yeah what's the point of the project that you're working on um and then you mentioned uh gtk4 um yeah. was there anything else um the i i i uh i my thoughts were just cut up the color at, at some point you mentioned uh like you know moving to poodle is that complete or does that still need oh that, no that's complete i we i, yeah. I already did what, what needed to be done and the service is up and running and um, I mean, uh, we all we also need maintainers. As long if if you if you can, there are lots of issues that are that have always existed in our repositories, right? So these issues would always exist because nobody has fixed them, right? So we would always need people who can actually test that this issue still exists and fix it, right? So it all goes it, it leads it leads off from using software first. And then we already have open issues, right? So you use the software and um, we have open issues you could check out. And it's easy to actually, um, you know, go from sugar to um, where you could report issues. I um, I know that currently in the browser activity, um, there, there's a, but there's a button in the homepage that should, that should take you to our GitHub. Yeah. If I remember correctly, yes. So, yeah, that's definitely a good starting point because the issues would always exist, right? If nobody fixes them, they would never be closed. So use and check out our open issues. There's always something to work on. There's always something to fix. Okay, so um, we're about out of time. Um, so I encourage anyone who wants to learn more, um, a starting point would be going to sugarlabs.org. Um, if you, you know, step zero, trying, uh, you know, uh, sugar, you can get sugar on a stick. Uh, this is Triscoll on a sugar stick. Um, you can download those. You can try it on Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, other distros. You can try Sugarizer. Um, near the bottom of the page, you can get to our GitHub page um, and you know learn more about the different issues. Um, if you're able to donate, um, you can come over here to 
to donate, make a financial contribution, which would help us hire more people, um, you know, like Ivium. Um, and uh, there's information about how to contact us and join our mailing list and chat with us on Matrix. So I think anyone watching this and uh, uh, stay tuned. Um, and thank you so much again, Ibian, for your time. Pleasure is mine. It's, uh, it's good to talk about sugar any day. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So on that note, bye. <laughs> bye. Yeah, this is, this is actually really cool. And um, I, I, I even forgot to talk about sentence uh, when you'd asked me, 